There are so many reasons to upgrade your kitchen cabinet. The best three reasons are, if you want to have a successful kitchen cabinet remodel, I recommend that you follow these five steps. So now let's see how they make. There are many styles that you can choose from. Shaker style. I want you to, to pay attention to when you measure. Uh, pull out tray, all of this stuff, all of this stuff extra. Uh, glass door extra, crown molding extra. Pantry. This is a must have in every house. Spice drawer, we talk about the filler, pull out the spice, the hinge inside the cabinet. So by this way, you cannot see it from outside. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, myrenovation.net. Today we'll be talking about kitchen cabinets. Please like, share, comments, and don't forget to subscribe, and thank you so much. There are so many reasons to upgrade your kitchen cabinet. The best three reasons are, increase your property value. So you add some fund to upgrade your kitchen, so you increase your property value. Number two, match your interior design, so you have certain interior design looks that you want to achieve for your house and you want to match this interior design into your kitchen. Number three, increase your kitchen storage and functionality and we're going to be talking about this part later on on this video. Is it worth it to update my kitchen? The simple answer is yes. The added value to your house is about 50 to 60% of renovated amount. For instance, if you spend $50,000 redoing your kitchen, then you can expect to recoup around $25,000 to $30,000. And that's very, very good. If you want to have a successful kitchen cabinet remodel, I recommend that you follow these five steps. Step number one to successful kitchen cabinet remodel is get inspired. Search the internet and dream about your new kitchen looks. So visit the internet, look at pictures, look at videos, see what other people are doing, see what the trend this day is. So by this way, your idea will start to develop in your head and you know exactly what you're looking for. Scope of work. As you are looking through the internet and you're looking at all of these videos, then you're going to decide what's the scope of work, what's exactly what you want to do for this sketching. And we're going to talk later on on this video uh, about the scope of work. Think about the budget. Do you have certain amount of money that you want to spend? Uh, are you going to go to the bank and get money? Are you going to get finance? Are you going to get like all of these deals uh, going on this days by one, get one free or uh, uh, three years finance? So think about all of this uh, budget uh, ideas. You have an existing uh, kitchen cabinet. Do you want to actually, do you want to dig the new kitchen cabinet completely? and install new one or you're gonna reface it. Also remember like if you're gonna have a new kitchen cabinet, so you will need to change the countertop and you need to change the backsplash most likely. And there is a plumbing, electrical and gas relocation sometimes too. So think about that too. Plumbing, gas and electrical relocation. Are you gonna keep the existing a kitchen cabinet as is in the same location or you want to remodel you want to change the looks you want to add 
uh, peninsula you want to add uh, uh, more cabinet is uh, that would require uh, plumbing gas and electrical relocation this is a big cost do to yourself or hiring interior design are you going to go to a kitchen uh, store and they actually going to take care of everything for you or you're going to hire an interior designer to help you to achieve your your looks and design and what you want to do for your house style what kind of style we're going to be talking about the styles uh, later on must have and maybe so i have to have uh, uh spice drawers but maybe i will have a pull out tray so you have to think about that also and we're going to be talking about all of this add on later on on this video now let's talk about finishes. Painted finish for hardwood. Colors are unlimited and every day the manufacturer release nicer and nicer colors. You can see here beautiful colors. Maple wood, maple finish. Maple wood is a hard wood with fine grain species, has even Textures. You can see here the textures even. Very nice. I love maple. Maple, you can stain it lighter and you can stain it darker and between. The cherry finishes. The cherry wood has a close fine grain variation. The color will get darker over time. So be careful, like if this is the color you choose, so you know, like uh, after six months, so the color will get a little bit darker. Doraform finishes. What is Doraform carpentry? Doraform uses foil and coating bonded to composite wood material, creating cabinets that are highly resistant to wrapping, heating, humidity, and fading. This innovative process makes it extremely durable and easy to clean. A lot of cabinet these days Duraform, and we'll talk more uh, about how they make it later on on this show or on this video. You can see here beautiful colors. You see here contemporary colors, softer color, lighter color, very nice colors. Thermofoil cabinet. Thermofoil are a unique type of cabinetry made using vinyl that is heated and pressurized into MDF core. Usually only used for cabinet door and drawer front. So the thermofoil, we, we don't use it inside. Inside usually it's plywood, but we use it for the door and the drawer. And these days they make the thermofoil exactly look like or similar to solid wood. So now let's see how they make it.
So thermofoil versus melamine laminate cabinets. Melamine and laminate cabinet are often confused with thermofoil, but they are not the same materials. Melamine and laminate are made of melamine plastic. Thermofoil is vinyl. You can tell them apart by the following. Thermofoil is thicker, softer, feeling peels off more easily and more flexible. Step two to successful kitchen cabinet remodel is find your look. Because a style that match your house, there are many styles that you can choose from. Shaker style, contemporary style, slab or flat panel, glass front, rustic country style, urban rustic, louver, traditional, open shelving, electric mix. You can see beautiful, they're all nice. It just, it's based on what kind of design and style and looks you wanna achieve for your remodel and your house. Step three to successful kitchen cabinet remodel is plan your space. Design the new kitchen to fit your lifestyle. Do you like to have breakfast uh, in the morning? Uh, so you need like high chair or what do you have like a big family? You need like a big table, exactly what your life is styled. So you have the kitchen has to make you comfortable. So design it to fit your lifestyle. It's very important to have accurate measurement. So you know exactly how many linear foot and we're going to be talking about that later on. Functionality is the key. So I need the kitchen to be uh, function well, so it make my life easy. Design for adding value to your home. Of course, you're going to spend big amount of money. Sometimes uh, remodeling the kitchen could reach like fifty, sixty thousand dollars. Consult professional. Just ask. Uh, most of the company they will give you advice for free. So ask before you go ahead and you start the remodel. Now let's talk about measurements. Now let's talk about measuring kitchen cabinet. Measuring kitchen cabinet is very, very simple because kitchen cabinet, you measure it with linear foot. So all what you need to do is just measure the linear foot. For example, like here, this is like uh, 14 inches. So it's uh, uh, one foot and two inches. Uh, this is here 15 inches, so one foot and three inches. Uh, here's something what I want you to, to pay attention to when you measure. You see this corner here? So sometimes what we do, we just close this corner so the cabinet is from here to here and from here to here and this box inside it's closed. So in this case, we don't measure this box. But if you have, they call it like a hidden uh, uh, cabinet. So this cabinet here extends all the way back. So then you have to measure all the way to the, to the end, to the wall. So in this case, so it is uh, two foot and two inches. This is one thing. So you measure again. So you measure linear foot. But one thing, actually a lot of people, they get confused with you have to measure the upper and lower because some people they said oh here we have two foot and that's it no there is two foot up here but here you have another two foot on the lower also so you have to measure the upper and the lower so you measure the upper you measure the lower and if there is a hidden cabinet the box here if this box if you're gonna close it and no cabinet so you don't measure it but if you're gonna have a hidden cabinet so you can go in so then you have to add this linear foot here in the bottom or on the back here and also 
on the bottom. The other thing what I, I want you to pay attention is, is like this area here. This is here, that's where we add the Lazy Susan as we discussed. Uh, here between the stove and this cabinet here, this little piece, that's what we call a filler. So in this case, there is nothing here, so you don't add this part. You keep measuring all of that, but also one more thing I want you to pay attention to. Uh, usually the bottom cabinet, it's a standard 36 inch high. The top cabinet is about 30 inches high. Sometimes you have like a high ceiling. If you have a high ceiling and you're gonna have like uh, 42 inches uh, high for the upper cabinet, then this is an extra cost. One more thing I want you to pay attention, above the microwave, you have to add that as linear foot also. Uh, above the, the fridge, also you have to add that as linear foot. If you have a pantry, pantry usually go from the, from the ceiling to the floor, then you add three. So this is going to be one, for example, like one foot from, from uh, one foot pantry from ceiling to floor. So it will be one foot, one foot, one foot. So it will be three linear foot for one foot pantry from the ceiling to the floor. You keep adding all of that and by this way you will figure out how many linear foot you have and uh, usually all the cabinet store they charge per linear foot and then after that you add that, the extras the extras as we will be discussing on this video extras like uh, uh, wine rack, uh, pull out tray, all of this stuff, all of this stuff extra a glass door extra, crown molding extra. Step four to successful kitchen cabinets remodel is it choose details. After selecting your cabinet, now it's time to dress up the cabinet with details and accessories. In the next few slides, I will be going through some of the details and add on to your kitchen. This is just an example here. This is a dish organizer. This is pot and pan organizer. You can see here, they make it higher so it can fit like blender, uh, big uh, uh, pots and pan. Filler pull out. This is actually very neat and, and I, I love this one because like in the past, what we used to do this, what's a filler? Filler, you know, the cabinet, most of the cabinet comes like in a certain length. So when you have like a dishwasher, a uh, stove, so that between the edge of the cabinet to the dishwasher, we used to call, we, we call this area filler. This filler could be like here, it could be at the end, it could be next, as I said, next to the stove. So in the past, what we used to do, we used to put a, a fixed cover so it's not accessible. So now why, why waste this area? So we use a filler. For example, like this is a filler pull out. Uh, and we use this one for spice rack filler pull out. Tray pull out. This again, this again, it's a filler uh, tray pull out. Uh, you can see like here, this is a dishwasher and this is the end. Uh, for example, like this particular kitchen, they don't want to use a corner because some people, they don't like the corner and lazy Susan and because it's not accessible well. So they block this box here, but it, so they use here a filler to gain this space. Sink storage. We all know under the sink how it, how it looks, but look here when you add the sink storage, look how neat and clean and organized. Pantry, this is a must have in every house. Spice drawer, we talk about the filler, pull out the spice, and this is a, a drawer a spice. Microwave cabinet, microwave cabinet could be on the lower cabinet and also could be on the upper cabinet. Coffee bar, fancy, I love that. 
That's all I'm going to say. West basket pull out. Uh, this is West basket. Sometimes it comes like with uh, a plastic uh, container and comes uh, and sometimes comes with wire containers that you can put the garbage bag in it. And it's really nice to have instead of having the the garbage uh, container uh, outside. Lazy Susan. As I discussed before, so this is the corner. So instead of just blocking this corner, uh, so we use a lazy Susan in the corner. Wine rack, this horizontal wine rack, we can actually install it vertical also. Deep roll out tray, similar to the pot and pan tray, pull out. A towel roll out track in the lower cabinet. Very nice to have. Now let's talk about legs, feet, and corpel. Legs comes in a different shapes, color, looks, materials. Example like this is wood, it could be in uh, metal, it could be stone, corpel. Corpel is we use it like if you have an overhang uh, counter uh, or a uh, uh, countertop, so then to support it, so we add the corbel instead of adding the legs, so you can have fit, you can, you can have more room for uh, that chairs to move in. Uh, feet, uh, after we put the column or the legs, we put like a feet in the bottom to add uh, design and nice looks to the collar. Crown molding, it's very nice to have crown molding because without the crown molding, you feel like it's something missing. You feel like it's, it, it just, it's like a nice hat to the upper cabinet that end the cabinet and make it nice comes in different kind of shape, looks, and color. You don't have to have the same color. You don't have to have the same materials. It's based on the cabinet also. Is your cabinet going all the way to the ceiling or it's going like a foot uh, uh, below the ceiling? So, it, but it is, it doesn't matter uh, what style cabinet you have. It's very nice to have crown molding. Hardwood and knobs. Hardwood is the personal touch that makes a living space truly yours. Show off your personality with colorful knobs, or you can go with classier looks with bronze knob. You can see the bronze knob, it's very classy looking, you will match everything. You don't need to think about design or color or matching, or you can go nice like that, showing off your personality. Now let's talk about hinges. There are two types of hinges, face frame hinges and frameless hinges. Face frame hinges is the most common used hinges. Are mountains on the cabinet box frame. So this is a face frame. This is a cabinet box frame. Then we add the hinges and we fix it or mount it into the, the box frame. Frameless hinges, there is no box frame. So we fix the hinge inside the cabinet. So by this way, you cannot see it from outside. The uh, frameless hinges known as European hinges. Step number five to successful kitchen cabinet remodel is to start your project. Select the right company, very important. Either you can have like a very nice, relaxing, uh, enjoyable remodel, or you can have like a nightmare uh, process and experience. So make sure you have, you select the right company from the beginning. 
ask for door samples. So just take the door sample to your house and make sure that actually you like it because every house is different when it comes to lighting and uh, so it match your design, it match your looks at your house. Ask about customer warranties, very important. You can spend like, if you just only installing the kitchen cabinet, you're gonna be spending like $10,000. So you wanna know what kind of warranties are you gonna be getting? Are you gonna be getting like one year warranty, three years warranty? What kind of warranty? Is it only against like peeling or against uh, uh, cracking? Or uh, how about like if there is any crack on the wood? What, just ask all kind of question. Everything, everything that comes in your head, just ask about it. Schedule the installation. Coordinate the cabinet and installation with the countertop and installation. As I said before, if you're gonna install a new kitchen cabinet, most likely you have to have a new countertop, a new backsplash. So make sure if you have a different company, so make sure that you schedule them together because sometimes like the gap between the kitchen cabinet and the countertop is like two, three weeks. So you don't want to do that. You wanna get the kitchen cabinet ready and both of them ready. And then you schedule them back to back, ask the kitchen cabinet company, how long is gonna take them? Most likely, or what they do, the kitchen cabinet, they come one day, they remove the existing cabinet, only in one day. You just remove everything. And then they come back the next day and they install the new cabinet. So it's like two days process because everything built off site. But once you do that, just make sure to ask the kitchen company if they will be taking care of the plumbing, gas and electrical, or you have to hire a consultant or you have to hire like um, uh, somebody uh, off site. So just make sure that actually everything is getting organized well. And also uh, check with the countertop because you don't want to have like, I, I, I see, or I remember like some people, they have like almost like two months with no kitchen and a huge mess inside the kitchen. So just organize it, plan it well, schedule it well, and it will be a very enjoyable uh, process. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that I answer some of your questions regarding kitchen cabinet. Please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and talk to you on my next video and goodbye. To subscribe to my channel, once you click into any video, you'll get this screen. If you find that the word subscribe in red, it means you are not subscribed. Once you click into it, it will change the gray. So red, you are not subscribed. Gray, you are subscribed. Thank you so much for watching my video.